theoretically we're both through here, so let's see if this works. Greetings, everybody. Welcome to Discussing Tabletop. It's January 13th, 2024. Everybody's having a great week. Oh, wait, I, I forgot to do the one thing. Oh, you forgot something? I did forget something. So I'll redo the intro in a second, which is fine. But, uh, I've been trying to record the audio separately. I didn't upload it last time. Oh. But I've been playing around with trying to get this thing to be like a podcast. Just Actual practice. podcast format. Yeah. Put it up because then it'll be like... Because plenty of people do all three places. Like podcast, YouTube, Twitch. 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 <clears throat> Audio and visual are, are different, and people do both a lot of the times. Yeah, I've been noticing that. Like, um, the Disc Only podcast, which is Tom's podcast, they do uh, audio and vis uh, audio only for the visual and audio that you can catch live, but I like to do it late at night when I'm asleep. Mm -hmm. Let me hit this button here and then do the intro again. Alright everybody, welcome to Discussing Tabletop, Hello. January 13, 2024. Greetings. Hey. According, according to sound things, you're getting picked up, thank you. Keep doing that thing where I hit this full screen button and it messes around with your... Nice. Stuff. Now... <clears throat> anyway. Got an interesting docket of topics for the day, and Momo is going to be joining me today. Hello. I am, I'm definitely still sounding a little sick, so just give that. <laughs> I'm not feeling too awful, but still. Um, we'll uh, play it by ear. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you just don't feel great. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll start with uh, the thing that seems to happen. I don't know. Is it every week? Every other week, uh, constantly. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Wizards and AI yet again. So, uh, I, I'm taking the Dicebreakers article here, but I did see it in other places before I read in the Dicebreakers. Thing. It's... This controversy is... Um, they didn't use AI directly. They basically... Who they hired for their advertisements to put them together basically made like an AI room to display a bunch of magic cards in. Yeah, I here's the problem. This is entirely not Wizard's fault. I agree. Again, it's again because the last time wasn't Wizard's fault either. It's people they're hiring. Yeah, I I think it's the thing that I think people are getting frustrated with it, and I can understand that. Is that They've made a statement about, like, oh, we don't support it, but they don't have, like, good quality control. Now, I can make comments about quality control since they just hired, fired a bunch of their art department. Cough, 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 cough. But, nonetheless, this is the kind of thing that, you know, you do want people to check up on. You know, especially if you are making a statement that you're supportive of artists and then people are honestly constantly doing it around you. Yeah. It's hard to catch. It is. Quality of insurance is, is very difficult to do, especially after firing a bunch of people. Yeah. Which again, I, I think I, I blame the Hasbro more for that for yeah. Wizards itself directly. You know, that's their parent company chose who to fire. So, again, it's a thing. It happened. I feel again, I, I, I definitely agree this is much less on Wizard's side of things. But, it is getting just a, a little, it, it keeps happening. It, can they just not? get into, like, this stuff. Just choose people that aren't going to do something about it. Or, like, you know, that are not going to do it. Come on, guys. Yeah, I mean, it's... Unfortunately, a lot of people do use AI as a shortcut, and it's not good. It's bad. It's theft. 
Here's why you should. Uh, open AI is literally being taken to court right now. It's just not a good look. Yeah. yeah. Like one of their, uh, like one of their major artists decided not to do anything with them anymore after this one because it's sort of like, e e they got fed up with it. You know, it's sort of like, hey, guys, you know, how many times are you not going to catch this? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's incompetence, but. It is. It, it, I, I don't. I don't blame the artist for never wanting to work with them again. I wouldn't either. If I was doing art and they kept missing the ship. Yeah. <clears throat> and again, like this is it's it's stuff you're commissioning from people. You know, you expect the best. And... Yeah. Yeah. So. Huh. <sighs> I'm just hoping that, you know, maybe they'll get their shit together and we won't have any more of these after this. We can only hope, but we'll see. Yeah. You want to read the full Dice Breakers article? There's a couple other uh, people that did uh, videos and stuff on it. I think at this point in time, I just wanted to point it out more than anything. Oh, yeah. Mm talked about it before on different things but we've been here before and we'll be here again i'm sure <sighs> maybe next time it won't be wizards it may won't be wizards maybe it'll be someone else maybe wizards will do something else stupid you know <laughs> uh, and we can always rely on that look i want i want the old days stupid that you know wizards or you know some of the other companies would do where i'm like i can complain about something and it's it's something that's not really a controversy. It's just kind of annoying. You know? I will say, I miss those things. it's hard for me to, like... Because I'm considering buying the Commander decks for the Fallout stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's hard for me to be like, I want to buy these when this company keeps fucking up all the time. And it's really annoying. It's frustrating. Above all, it's just sad. It was one of those things is that, like... I thought about it heavily, and like I don't do a I I, we, I do little bits of magic content like actual because this is both D and D and magic you know for for a thing like this for wizards you know yeah. but the magic content I spread out a lot because honestly speaking there are a lot more people that do things like I I like watching um, a couple other people and like I usually use the Clarion College for a good example because yeah. uh, he's one of the larger ones that does it that I I check out some of his stuff for him. I don't do those financial breakdowns, but it's so interesting to see that, like, I watched this earlier this morning before, while I was getting ready for my other uh, stuff this morning, the financial breakdown of their wrap with the remastered set. And at the prices, because they don't have MSRPs on Magic stuff, he's like, yeah, if it goes for the prices it's going now, it's not worth it. You should wait till it's cheaper. Then maybe it might be worth it. You know? Yeah. It's like, and that's a kind of sad thing. It's like, it's the... It can be something that's a very good product, but if you overprice it, you can fucking do that a lot. Magic cards are expensive. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm worried about things like Fallout decks and stuff like too, because like, there's a lot of really cool things they do with things. I hope they're reasonable. Anyway. Uh, we should talk about a company that makes me feel nicer about life. Mm -hmm. Um... So Paizo is doing something very interesting. I'm, I'm sure this is stuff that's kind of been done before, but uh, they are putting together a basically... There will be an all-ages tag on some of their stuff now. Um, because they aim for like a PG-13 maturity, and they're mm -hmm. splitting up and doing some more, you know, younger people-friendly stuff. With their friends that's good. Friends, you know. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a simple thing. Um, it is something nice that they are expanding that. I guess it's one of those things is there's a lot of role-playing games that are either geared towards more family-friendly slash mm -hmm. kid-friendly or they just aren't at all. Yeah. And, uh, ha having the option of both is good. It is. Uh, I've said this before on the show. I'll say it again. Uh, tabletop Role-playing games are a very good way for people to learn, especially children, to learn valuable skills, mm -hmm. mathematics, social skills, um, yeah. things like that. 
creativity. They're very creative endeavors. It's good for young people to play them. It's a really great way to practice your math. Um, it's social contact. It's all the things that kids do genuinely need to grow up healthy. Uh, so I, the more things that kids get to play, the better, in my opinion. Yeah. And, you know, it's one of those things is that I've always reflected upon how I... I like the way that <coughs> Paizo addresses addresses a lot of, like, important topics nowadays. Unlike, you know, wizards which like to sweep them under, sweep them under the, car uh, the carpet nowadays. Um, and so... Something where you can, like, brace a subject like that, where you can move into something happier that is something more to think about, about, you know, like, stuff related to the real world when it comes to the fantasy game is a good thing, too. You know, you can take your steps along the way to those more mature things, and a game that has that, you know, point to get there is good, too. Yep. It's a good thing. Uh, also... From Paizo, they have uh, an announcement with this um, mobile VTT that they're going to be working with, Tengu Studios. So I'm not sure how good or bad this is, since it's something that uh, they're working with Pathfinder to bring about. I don't know. Um, it's a mobile VTT, so it's probably better for assistance for someone yeah. in IRL too. Yeah, this would be pretty much like um, how D and D Beyond is good for assisting with that, rather than being a full BTT. Yeah, roll twenty. So it does look like it has some basic map stuff too, which is good. Um, but again, it's the kind of thing that like. If I want to just use my phone or tablet to set up a map and have move characters move things around on it while we're, you know, yeah. either using your phones to roll stuff or pen and paper, you know, stuff too. Um, it's a neat idea. Stuff too. But yeah. Um, I guess it's something if you're interested in it, check it out. But um, definitely this is... Um, you have to... You, it, it has to be for you kind of thing. I, I would say do maybe wait till it's like because we're in early access, so maybe give it a little time just to see what people say about it that have had a chance to test it out. Um, yeah, and then uh, make your decision if you want to give it over. Because it looks as though um, they do have a pricing plan for the entire thing, so it's not a free material. Doesn't look to be expensive though for the actual detail. Anyway, <clears throat> so there's uh that. Alright. So let me see if I can make this So I saw here, which I don't have Maybe press release or this is enough to go by the news site. That's a good question. Let's go look check Steamforge games. So the entire thing is Steamforge Games is going uh, a little bit global by working with Lucky Duck Games in order to get multiple language uh, translations. And so where is your Um, do you have it here? I'm just seeing if I can get a better thing than the, like, mm -hmm. link to the, uh... Which apparently, like, none of them are saying about it. They, uh, probably it's, like, on their Twitter. It probably is on their Twitter. I'll just, I'll put the tabletop game news link here. Um, if I saw it here. Usually they have links to something, but they didn't have any links today. Anyway, um, yeah, but anyway, um, Lucky Ducks will be handling localization distribution in the uh, places. It looks as though 
what languages were they working on? Did they just say multiple languages throughout global access? And Steamforged are the people that did... Steamforged has done a lot. Yeah. They did like the Resident Evil Dark Souls board games. Resident Evil yeah, the Dark games. Souls board game. Um, Resident Evil. They've done the Gears of War card game. Uh, they did a big blunder with the Dark Souls role-playing game. Looks like Sea of Thieves is their one of their yeah. newer ones. They they do a lot of. Um... They do a lot of miniatures board games. Yeah. So. It's it's pretty good stuff they tend to do. Just don't give me. Fine, whatever. I was trying to look for something in there, but they just God. It, sometimes these tabletop people's work, uh, websites just suck. I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, finally found something that you can play with. Let's see if it's Steamforge Twitter. Has something. Um. I, I don't know where their announcement is. They had an announcement either on Lucky Duck or something. And Lucky Duck had so whatever, uh, there's the link to it. Uh, it's a, That's a news site that I've used before plenty of times. Normally I have links. They don't have a link here. So good luck if you want to search for it, whatever. God, I'm tired. I'm kind of sick. Of I don't want to fuck around with this kind of shit, man. Ugh. That's fair. Anyway, so it, I mean, it's cool. Global stuff is good, you know, having it spread out. Really good. Having more markets is good. Mm -hmm. So, moving on though, because I don't want to play too much. The uh, role playing game Tro Troika. Mm -hmm. Troika. Um,. It's a sci-fi tabletop RPG. Very, very British sci-fi humor kind of thing. Um, it's putting up, like, its core uh, rules for free. The website now. Um, oh, he's just... A D, he's D3s. Yeah. G3s and D6s? What is a D66? I I don't know. Look, this is I've never this is... seen a D sixty. What is a D six? I've never heard of a D sixty six. That's a new one to me. Mm hmm. So yeah, I mean it. It's nice that they're putting up uh, basically. Uh, apparently, you can get. Um, the digital stuff if you sign up for their newsletter. Um, yeah. Which is also horrendous. What'd you say? The website is so bad to navigate. Yeah, so I'm not gonna lie. Maybe um, getting that newsletter and the free copy of the PDF yeah. version of it with the intro adventure, apparently, too, would be a better idea. Not gonna lie, if you don't want to, like, nav navigate that there, too. Um, apparently, you know, it's been out for a while now, and um, it it hasn't, like, had a lot of uh, success, so they're probably trying to, like, I guess, garner up basic success for it by, like, putting that kind of thing out. Yeah. There's plenty of people that still want to buy physicals and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but, you know, uh, I mean, you know, maybe other stuff to offer along the way that you know, get people in on the game and then try it out and be like, oh, now I want to buy some more books or PDFs on it or something. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie, this is kind of the thing that Paizo does. Yeah. Pathfinder, so... I, I, if this is more of a business opportunity, I hope it is, that it works for them, or if it's just that they uh, 
are moving on and just want to like have the stuff for everybody for all time or anything, that's also fine too, whichever direction. Mm-hmm. It is. I think under... I don't know where to find the newsletter on the new. Maybe new. Somewhere. Oh, yeah. I'm always a proponent of physical copies of things because less goes wrong with a physical copy. Mm-hmm. Huh. You call him the old chat, but I'd rather have a physical book. Honestly speaking, if I have the opportunity, I would too. Oh, here it is. If you're at the resources, the book, it's just join the newsletters under there. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they say right there, running digital for book free. Yeah. Huh. Ah, uh, so there you go. Um, there's there's your experimental free uh, RPG if you haven't checked it out. Anyway, um, just because we've had at least one passing, and you know, I you know want to keep a shout out. You know, if someone has done some good job, you know, give it up and pass away. Uh, Channel Jacques, who was a Dungeon Dragons and video game designer, has passed away. So. Very tragic. Yep. She illustrated covers on source books and modules, including uh, Dragon Mountain Adventure. Our Tower Mountain. as well. Mm-hmm. Did some work with Call of Cthulhu, publisher Chaosium, apparently, too. So, did a lot of uh, uh, material there, and, you know, passed away at the age of 67, so. She is very, very famous in the games industry for her work on Pac-Man and Donkey Kong as well. Oh, that's that's She also helped with Quake, which is oh, what modernized first-person shooter. She's very, was a very well-known person. Yeah, dang. So. Anyway, you know, uh, shout out, uh, remembrance and stuff like that to someone that uh, did a lot of good job in the bunch of the very nerdy industries that we're in now. So, um, definitely want to keep those things in, in, in your memory and stuff like that. And the finally ended up for like just the uh, news sort of stuff. I've got, you know, uh, what you brought me, Momo, and there's just a bunch of like things on sale. Bunch of sales. Uh, Everyone loves sales. Start starting with the New Year's New Year New Game Sale from uh, Roll Twenty. So if you want to get some like module stuff for your uh, Roll Twenty games, up to forty percent off. Yep. That's like uh, books, maps, more than just the basics that are provided with some of the games. Yep. You can get some stuff pretty cheap. Yeah. Pretty good. Pathfinder Cool Book twenty four bucks. Definitely, if you're looking into expanding a lot in Roll20 stuff, that might be a place to do it. And then there are two Humble Bundles to shout out here. Uh, Call of Cthulhu one, because everybody loves some uh, Chaosium of goodness of Call of Cthulhu. Uh, always, you know, you want your brain-melting horror. Yeah. And for 25, you get all 25 items. And then the other one is the digital board game bundle. Here, looks to be. The uh, Play Pink. So there's another one that uh, for 20, you get all the copies of it. It's digital board like Gloomhaven, Terraforming Mars, the. Game of Thrones board game, uh, Carcassonne. I like Carcassonne. Uh, Splendor, Small World. Um, Not a lot of good stuff here. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, and a bunch of DLCs for them all. So, I mean, they're. So it's uh, it's one of those things. Is like, as much as I like something like Tabletop Simulator, I'm honestly like. Like, if you're telling me that if you want to play Mysterium, I would go for the Mysterium. Um, I would use the the digital version. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so much better. Like, 
they do they do a really good job at a lot of these digital board games nowadays yeah. that make it really worthwhile and they hit them. Um, so uh, like Carefree Mars is like one of the best digital board games as well. Mm-hmm. And people like Gloomhaven a lot, even though I've yet to try I've never it out. played it. Apparently it's like one of the best games ever made. I I hear that. <laughs> it's just like, hmm, I should probably check that out at some point in time. And then I uh I then I don't. <laughs> one day I will. One day one day Gloomhaven I will test you out. Uh, <clears throat> that is ah, the news of the week. Yay! <laughs> Not too bad. Alright. Uh so uh, let, let's let's do our week in tabletop and then I'll do the yeah. discussion topic because honestly this is me being like Oh, I didn't come up with a topic ahead of time, but I was, you know. My schedule's just been off today, too. Yeah, that's A little, fair, a little right? bit more than normal. Mm-hmm. Be that way. Yeah. Um, did you do anything last Sunday? Sunday? Um, was I there? Was that session last Sunday? I don't know. It remember. was! It was! And you were there for it. Yes. Uh, we had Joe's game. I honestly, because Joe's game is so very, very fr- infrequent, I forgot that you were there. Because I don't um, remember Worm is there sometimes. So, I was but, there, for better or worse. Ah, uh, look, you know, Joe definitely gets a lot of Pathfinder and D&D 5e confused. His, his brain is very Pathfinder right now, which is yeah. not always good. Because, like, I know a lot of things he was saying would be like, it's not actions. So certain things are not actions in 5e. They're actions in or it's minor actions and stuff in Pathfinder. I'm like, hmm. I just try to roll with the punches. And I know. Brain doesn't work. Anyway, um, we talked to an old dwarf. A portal to a fiery place uh, opened up. We killed some elementals. And, yeah. and a guy that I sassed a lot. I, I, I really went sass on that man. Uh, the session was fine. Lightning knows my dislikes and likes the <laughs> unique to test how much I hate enemies that just blow up when they die. Yeah, I'm not a fan of those as much anyway, too. I mean, like, I did use the disease one, but only because it was the toughest thing on that road. Less that it exploded. Because it's also just I'm... silly. Oh, God. It was just absurd and funny. We'll, we'll talk about that at the session, though. But yeah, like I, I, I'm kind of like this like point in time where like I feel like a lot of times things that explode are just kind of like to be dicks about it, you know? Yeah. Um. So <laughs> less less a good reason behind it, kind of thing. And these were fire creatures that exploded into fire and. The guy didn't explode, did he? He did, I think. Oh god, he fucking exploded. I think everyone exploded. Why did everyone explode? Uh, I I do like how I couldn't, like, you know. (laughs) He's even the player. Look, you know, I did get some explosions on me. And And I made it that that combat was, uh, doable and putting everything to sleep constantly. Yeah. <coughs> Which, uh, sorry, Joe, if you got annoyed at my putting it in the sleep, but, uh, it's Probably what my bard did. Is. That's just bard. Yeah. I don't think we really did anything else in that game. No, um, I was there for the combat, and that was it. I think we just, like, finished up the area, maybe going home. I don't know. Huh. I don't know. I, I'm kind of at the point in time where I don't mind his game, but like, there's there's like an overarching story that I know he wants to get to, but I'm mm-hmm. like, I feel we're a couple steps away from it, and I feel like it might. I don't know how long he wants to go with it too, because I think that's yeah. like, I think an issue with Joe as a GM. He doesn't have a like, good time sense for how long the game goes. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, I this is like the second thing Joe's ever run for me, and it was it was like fine. He's an okay. DM. Not the worst. I've experienced worse. I've experienced oh, yeah. far worse. <laughs> and, I, and he actually like learned some lessons and stuff too. I think he yeah. learned a lot from grinding gears and stuff too, which is good. Um, but I st sometimes question if he's learned enough. I'm worried about that. Sometimes. We're all learning. We're all still learning, no matter when we started running games. Very true. Well, you can always get a good lesson here and there. Yeah. And there good stuff. Uh, yeah. So, oh, did you do anything on Monday? Monday? No. The only tabletop thing I did was besides, um, part uh, the game that you run was Baldur's Gate. Okay. Well, how how did your Baldur's Gate go this week? We finished Baldur's cool. Gate three finally. Um, a pretty pretty long <laughs> game. Um, it was great. It was fun. We got an okay ending, I think. Um, okay. Not not the full ending we wanted, but we couldn't get certain dialogues to trigger, <laughs> ah. so we didn't get the ending we wanted for a certain character, and then. Ah. Lightning got the sad, tragic ending for that character. Um, but you know, my my Gith Yankee got a pretty happy ending because I got a tall, seven foot tall druid himbo and a goth wife. You know, so things ended pretty well for me. Uh -huh. uh, also, it makes me wonder because Baldur's Gate three is is canon to the D and D universe. How? Wizard is gonna canonize some stuff because man, the ending we did changes a lot <laughs> in the TNT canon. Hmm. Oh boy, uh, you'll see when you play it. So it's one of those things that probably the ending probably has a, like a couple of different things. Your question is what think, version of it? Yeah, it like I want to know when it's gonna be canon because man, I want to say it, but I can't because it's like a mega spoiler. Yeah. Well, I understand. It's kind of like with a lot of be eventually. It's kind of like a lot of stuff with how Paizo canonizes all the stuff. Yeah, has. Everything has a canon world state. Even like Baldur's Gate Two has a canon world state that affected D onward. Grand wasn't that much because they blew up most of the world and D and D and reforged it anyways. Um, but there's there's so much in Baldur's Gate that changes the status quo, and I I, I have to wonder what the the default. What the canon version of that game is. I keep forgetting that uh, for Forgotten Realms, they basically pool a world of darkness. And they're like, we blow up the world, but we don't yeah, quite blow up the world. It also like, like, fix changed the everything. And it totally changes everything. And it, I, I, think, I think Baldur's Gate taught lighting that Minx still exists in 5th <laughs> edition. Because he's, he's, he's alive. His, yeah. his, the reason he's alive is very funny, and I forget what book it appears in, but man just got turned into a statue for a hundred years and it woke up. <laughs> That'll do it and, for you. And with his goddamn hamster. Yeah, and his goddamn giant miniature space miniature giant space oh, hamster. He's so fucking funny. I love I love Minx so much. <sighs> Minx and Jihara are like two of my favorite characters in D D. Yeah, I, I guess that's a thing to maybe like talk about the weird thing of uh, canon outside of uh, basic books. Something yeah, because like, even like even the adventure paths can end in such weird ways, and I don't know what are, what the canon state of Forgotten Realms is right now because all the adventure types kind of happen at the same time in Fifth Edition. All right, uh, but yes, we had Wednesday then, which you finished up a dungeon, and then, uh, uh, which I think went fine. I mean, it like, went, it went funny. It was very funny. Look, because at the, the end, we had we had we had Cabbage Head, who's just so weird, and like, I, I, the the lines I was using were basically they gave me an example of a bunch of lines. Which is, he says stuff like this all the time, you know. He just says stuff like this. It's sort of like. Me, take pretty elf, put in pit, you know. He's not smart. He's not good at comedy. Hey, he's uh, ugly as well. He's dead now. We put him out of his misery. He kind of was in a situation. He was 
he was saved by a necromancer and decided that necromancer was his father. Yeah, <laughs> he no, wasn't really they're, his they're father. both dead now, so... Well, well, the apprentice and him are dead. The necromancer yeah. man is probably going to die not too long after. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, the, the apprentice you beat the crap out of. Um, he, he lived... Honestly, longer than I thought, and it's he just used how it his... goes with mages. You know, they live too... mages at early level either live too long or die too quickly. Like he, he, his big thing was like, "Well, I've got a scorching ray; it hits <laughs> worm and almost murders it." And that was it. And then it was. Like, I... well... I'm not gonna lie; it would have been really funny if worm died. Because... I would have been very funny. He did run off there. Because it would have been entirely Worm's own fault. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, you know, you can keep going down these tunnels. They lead to other areas. It's fine. It's just people here. <laughs> you doing party. Uh, uh, there's no. going to be some kind of downtime, and then a necromancer character is going to show up and punch us all or something. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if he shows up in book two or book three. I have to check. Uh, I feel like the game... I was already going to do it, but I feel like the game is just like, hey, wizard, here's a bunch of necromancy stuff. Yeah, I know. They really do give you a bunch of necromancy stuff, and I'm like, well, that's appropriate. I was already (laughs) going to do that anyways. Yeah. Uh... Hey, look, that Divine Fury will be helpful. Uh, I mean, I feel like I don't deserve it, you know? I've been pretty good for the most part. Yeah. <clears throat> I've done nothing wrong. Just yeah. ignore the two people I've executed. I mean, they were totally evil. Well, yeah. I mean, Cabbage Hep is probably irredeemable, but yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, Darrow's just a monster. Most of the time. Uh... If they're insanity then, and they're uh, hey, devotion I to dark need forces. lightning. I need that blood, alright? I need it for later. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yes. And then uh, there was an execution that was foiled by... It's, I'm just sorry. The book presents it in the most, like, Saturday afternoon action show. Where, like, it's the... It's like the like the old, like, Xenas or Herculeses or all those other kind of shows. Very, that very they dumb. Oh, yeah. It, it's so... Presented in such a way, and I'm like, hey, of course, when they read the book, they made him a vigilante. It's so appropriate yeah. <laughs> because this is exactly. He's probably a rogue before or something. Yeah, I'm like, this makes it so much better, just so much better. <laughs> uh, I just I love doing that, but it's also so ridiculous. <sighs> it's like I could reference like it's like he's, he pulled like a. Like a Zorro or a Scarlet Pimpernel or something. Definitely. More, those, more along those lines. But. Yeah. Blackjack saved a uh, woman from being executed. Yeah. And then uh, basically uh, insulted the queen and, you know, the, the controlling people of Corvosa and, uh, and, and uh, ran off with it. That's kind of where we left off. Queen deserves it, probably. I mean, maybe, maybe not. At very least, she's, uh, she's going along with whatever's going on. Um, or just yeah, making like, terrible decisions. Yeah, Lightning's got it right. A better version would be Jack Black shows up and does all that <laughs> stuff. Uh, that'd be really hilarious, but no. Just, um, sh- shreds in his guitar and explodes a man's head. <laughs> yes. Uh, decapitation! <laughs> God damn it, that made me think of hey, God gonna... damn. <laughs> Just Look, everything made... everything Jack Black's in is good. I, Just... I will I will I will accept no, nothing else. It just it just makes me think of Brutal Legend. The, hey, the part that of it that's not an RTS. Weird game. <laughs> I, I liked that game still. It was very weird. <laughs> I'm like, you lucky I like RTSs. And I'm not against this. But I was expecting no. an action game. I, I think everyone should watch Tenacious D at least once. Yes. Um, did you do anything else during the week tabletop? Program? No, nothing. Just just a lot of Baldur's Gate. I, di- I did work on a character. 
We'll say that. Yeah, that right game now. was supposed to start. Yeah. Last week, but it didn't. Yeah. But I, I have I have a, a, a like sixty six percent done uh, yeah, stat wise. Yeah, and... I think most people are done. I haven't gotten a backstory from somebody, but I don't need a backstory for session one. I I have an idea about a backstory, but I also like don't know enough about the world to really give a good one, I feel it's like. Also the like mega ancient world where your backstory is not gonna matter. Yeah. You live poor in a constant like like war held area. <laughs> That's 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 the world right now. I'm hanging out in a tree. Does that mean I'm a dry ass? The world mildly <laughs> exploded a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, if you missed me talking about tabletop, I talked about Denver and Shadowrun on Tuesday. Uh, a couple of Jimmy Kim and uh, Ramiz Mrazmiran on for Pathfinder on Thursday. Just earlier today, I talked about the Werebats. They're extinct. Their deaths was horrible. Uh, not just caused by the werewolves, mostly caused by the werewolves. Uh, but yeah, uh, turns out, you know, things go bad in the world of darkness. Often. True. Not wrong. Yeah. So here, I guess we give that deeper discussion topic a kind of a broader. Um, canon, uh, when it relates to, uh, published materials. Mm-hmm. Because that comes in with, uh, of course, things like Paizo and their adventure paths become canon. And they have a version of the adventure that is usually the... It's a positive result, but it's not, like, the best result. Mm -hmm. um, things like with Skulls and Shackles, the, the canon thing is, there was a big battle. The, uh, you know... Uh, Admiral was defeated for Cheliax, and then, you know, some things happened with uh, the Hurricane King, and Tessa became the Hurricane Queen, and call it a day, well. you know. Um, or I know where, canon-wise, Corvosa ends up, mm -hmm. you know. Um, a lot of shit goes down, and I know what happens after the adventure. Uh, uh, you know, so... Granted, your version of it could definitely be different, yeah. but um, I, I know what the canon is for the results of uh, the Curse of Crimson Throne, and what happens. And then we get into things like, you know, the what you were saying, the Baldur's Gate games, which are canon to the Forgotten Realms world, yeah. along with, I gotta be honest, a lot of the canon of Forgotten Realms, isn't that written by uh, uh, Salvador. R.L. Salvador? Yeah. Or El Salvador, because the Dritz books are the main source for most of it. Yeah. So, it's an interesting thing that, like, in a juxtaposition that, like, Paizo puts a lot of their canon, which they do do some in books. They have done some books, but a lot of it comes from their published ventures, where I feel like D&D &D Forgotten Realms comes from their novels and video games more than yeah. their adventures. Like... The adventures all have canon endings, and this isn't this isn't really a spoiler, but like for because this was teased, Baldur's Gate three starts like a couple months after Descent into Avernus. Descent into Avernus leads into Baldur's Gate three. They don't they leave it very vague for what happens in Descent to Avernus in the game's backstory. Mm. All that all that matters is the people of I forget what the city is called. Despite being mentioned a billion times in Baldur's Gate 3, the city that got dragged through the hells, um, all those people got out as refugees, and they show up in Act 1 of Baldur's Gate 3. That's all they really say about it. And they mention it here and there. If you play a tiefling, it's assumed you're from there. Um, yeah. But they don't really go into it in, in the game very much, because I, I assume they don't want to. I don't. I assume they don't want to say this is a canon, which is an interesting thing uh, to do. It it, it 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 both helps and hurts the story. I think a little bit. Not to say that it's not not yeah. bad or good, but you know, I feel it, it is definitely an interesting thing that you know when you look at Paizo and their definite like this is what happens kind of uh, attitude about you know the adventure paths which they don't say until a little later on anyway. But 
we do know a lot of the canon endings for those. We've, we've learned those. I just like... It's also interesting that, you, as you said it, that the stuff in Baldur's Gate 3 is supposed to be canon. Where we had Baldur's Gate 1 and Baldur's Gate 2 also being canon. Yeah. Um, it Baldur's Gate Two is very easy to be like, oh, this is what happened because it's second edition. Right? It's old. It's very old. Yeah, and it's kind of all decided. Like you know that the main villain of Baldur's Gate Two dies. He's bested by the heroes. The ballists are defeated. <laughs> um, and the heroes Minx, Jahira. I don't remember the other ones. Yeah. They all win the day and have big party and all that. But you don't have that in 5th edition. Because the 5th edition is still being actively written. It is It is one of those things that, like... I, I feel like even with the act of writing, you can still kind of give the story evolves over. I think that's what the thing that I... Maybe, that, maybe that's another thing that kind of annoys me about 5th edition a little bit more. Um, is like okay, we have the entire thing with like the, the the new edition that is kind of updating the system. It's an evolving system. Fine. What about the story? You know, like the setting yeah. and stuff like that. Your main setting. Can we have that evolve and change and feel like it's a growing world? No. Okay. You know, you just write these adventures and they could happen. You know, these like. Because some of them are pretty big, like, events, too. You know, like, uh, the entire Dragon Queen saga. What's the canon ending for that? Is there a canon ending? Did it happen? Like, you know, or does it just another big story about, like, you know, Tiamat could do some stuff, but doesn't actually? It's weird. It's it's really weird. Um, yeah. It's not really... No, and there's not really a right or wrong way to do it, either. I think, I guess that's but it true. hurts. It hurts with the the writing a bit for progressing your world when you don't really want to make a statement. Yeah, I think that's the thing that like I think I reflect upon with a lot of other lore from places when they put out books and adventures and stuff. As much as I can complain about it, you know. 95% of stuff that Paizo does is canon to their stuff. Uh, the same could be said with Shadowrun. When Shadowrun puts us thing out, hey, it's the new canon, it's it's usually based on the old canon. I, and even World of Darkness does that a lot, too. I complain about what uh, the, the V5 story to a degree, but, you know, at least they're building upon the canon that existed there. there, 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 was is act there is actually something funny I've remembered with Baldur's Gate and this goes to wizards pulling can from a bunch of things. Um, in patch five, they added a nice wrap up epilogue that mentions the D and D game the Baldur's Gate three cast did as their own characters, which means that D and D game is canon to Forgotten Realms. Look, I just feel like that's that's Larian doing that more than Wizards doing that, though. Thank Larian for doing that. Thank you. Um, but that that is hilarious, and I love that. Um, but that whatever venture that was, because I remember hearing that they did that. It was very that. funny. I think most of them had never played D and D before that. <laughs> ah, man. Huh. Yeah. No. Um. Definitely, it's this interesting thing that, like, if you're in a world that's very story-driven, or you use a world that's very story-driven, I feel like respecting that story is an important thing. Mm -hmm. But just there's so many times that I just don't, you don't see it as much. Like, well, I, I, I think, mm -hmm. I, I was going to say here, when you mentioned the apocalyptic event that was supposed to be in, like, um... Faerun that reset everything or something yeah, like that. Yeah, the spell plague. It reminded me of the failed apocalyptic event they did with World of Darkness that they mm -hmm. had to re retcon because it was a terrible idea. And I'm yeah. like, huh, you don't think this is a terrible idea? And I feel like it's another reason that, like, man, 
I I missed the old lore for Faerun a lot because it was better. I, hmm, I don't know if it was necessarily better. Uh, there, there's more. That's true. I think there's just more. More of it, yeah. Um, and you, for Forgotten Realms, it's nice because they don't. For like older editions, they don't shy away from that lore being canonized because they can't because several people who were involved in that are very much still alive in Forgotten Realms. Elminster is still walking around. And Minx and Jahira are both still alive. Yeah. But it, it does call into question, like... I mean, okay, I'm gonna say that it definitely is silly more that, like, Galarian, the Pathfinder world... Like, there's, an, there's a pseudo-apocalyptic or dangerous event happening, like, every... Constantly, it seems yeah. like, in this tumultuous time period. A lot of fifth edition adventures, the ending doesn't necessarily matter because none of the adventure paths affect the world state that much. Yeah. So, so it's like a... in Neverwinter or Baldur's Gate or Waterdeep or somewhere that doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, I, and I, I think that's like both like a like I do feel like definitely good slash bad because I'm like. Yeah, I feel like that's a little bit more on the extreme side. The the all the adventures technically take place and they're all crazy in in Pathfinder and it's all canon, okay. But then again, like then it's the opposite end, which is like fifth edition where it's like, ah, these might happen, they might not, whatever. <clears throat> like maybe somewhere in the middle is better, where you kind of have canon events and stuff like that and the stories vaguely matter, but maybe you don't have to have such crazy adventures sometimes. The the, the world yeah. doesn't have to end. You know? Cough, cough. Uh, like the one you're playing now, Curse the Crimson Throne. That's a pretty big adventure that is technically not, you know, world shattering. At most, like, if <clears throat> the heroes would fail, Corvosa probably goes to shit. I mean, you it's know? not going to get much worse. I, it could, it could get worse, but not by much. <laughs> I agree with that one too. Yeah. But sort of like if the heroes fail, generally Corvosa is on an upward, positive path for getting to be a better place than it was. You yeah. know, I guess it's that kind of difference there of like, is that a large difference? No, it's not like some of those adventures that yeah, have really big... We're, we're gonna say Corvosa, the barbarian man, a lizard, and a necromancer. <laughs> Tavo will probably be there, too. Uh, Tavo will be no, like, he'll be asleep. Hey, yeah. He'll be oh, 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 save the world, don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, we need whatever the hell lighting's speaking to drag some of this party awake. Uh, but, you know... I. I, I feel like that's a better story because it's like just in one point, you know, it tells a decent tale and like the canon story is, you know, it's a slightly upward trajectory, you know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think it's a lot of like in, in Forgotten Realms, the adventure paths just don't, aren't the thing that necessarily pushes the story forward. True. Whereas in Pathfinder, the, the adventure paths are what push the story forward. Yeah, it's... Like, Skull and Shackles directly leads to a Chalaxian Civil War. Mm -hmm. So there's, like, three adventures that are connected together. Like, you know, Skulls and Shackles leads them to two more right after that. It, it's interesting that, yeah, like... What... Where do we get the source of, like your canon Forgotten Realms nowadays other than the Dritz books. Yeah, it's just kind of the Dritz books and the video games. Yeah. Like, and I understand, you know, maybe it's 5e in general wants to take a step away from Forgotten Realms to a degree? Is that what they really want to do? They just don't want to have a world? They just uh, want to be I think they want the world, but I think they don't want a world so rigid that players can't mess with it too much. Because that's kind of the thing with Forgotten Realms is the canon doesn't really, and this is true for 
everything canon doesn't fucking matter. You can do whatever you want. Canon, you don't need canon. It doesn't matter, right? I agree. Like, like I've I played around with the timelines a little bit when we were doing skulls and shackles just to make things convenient for me and stuff like that, you know. And it the the canon matters as much as you want it to in the setting. And like certainly, I did not need the shackles to end up in a version of that's the exact same thing as um um what happens in canon. Now, granted. It did because of some things that happened in the story kind of yeah. end up in that direction. But it didn't need to. You know. It's that... And, and the thing is, I know the canon of Corvosa. I'm not planning for you guys to get anywhere near there. I don't yeah. know what yours is going to result in. Like, it's, it's strange. Because coming at this from a, <clears throat> a world builder's perspective um someone who has created two living worlds and a very long term living world with a friend mm -hmm. canon is very important to me because it's our worlds are our, our living worlds we have many games set in them some of those games interact with each other Things in one game sometimes get mentioned in another game. So when we have a living world like that, we have to keep this canon of adventure. Sometimes we have to clean the canon up for past games. Like the game where you played Marty, that game doesn't work anymore because yeah. the world has changed so much. So we've had to look at that game and be like, these events happened, these events did. Yeah, it makes sense. Piranha Realms doesn't have that. If Rotten Realms is not a living world. Yeah. It is a static world that has a world state where adventure paths are set. It's, a, it's an interesting thing, too, because I felt like it's become more static in 5th edition, though. Because I felt like a lot of the older, like, AD&D stuff would have given a mixture of things, too, you know? Um, or... You know, maybe closer to, like, what um, Pathfinder slash Galarian does now, where it's, like, the world is, this is the world state. Your adventures can do whatever they want with them. The adventure yeah. paths can do whatever they want with them. But we'll, like, you know, afterwards we'll, like, talk about, you know, what really happened. During it, you can have anything you want happen. You know, whatever. Um... <clears throat> it is a more rigid world. Definitely. Yeah. But that's a tough thing to see. Yeah. Like, that is a tough thing to say. What is? I don't think anyone is necessarily better. I guess it's just what you're looking for. Yeah, it depends on what the type of world you have is. Like, if you have a, a static setting like Forgotten Realms or some kind of pre-existing setting that you didn't necessarily make or that is heavily commercialized, you might not want canon. Right? Yeah. But sometimes, like when, for example, uh, I don't know, someone in a game makes some kind of deal with the Spectral Lich from a one-off item I put in, and now suddenly that Lich is the villain of a different game. Yeah. Uh... Yeah. It was Aerie can get messed up so badly here as show up and fix it. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a weird thing that like I feel like you know it's the it, again if you're making your own world you're making your own world you don't have to worry about this you know that's that's the thing I I've, I've made plenty of my own worlds in the past too um, I just you know nowadays a lot more it's a lot easier for me when I'm doing a lot of stream games just to use my own version of a canon world and. You know, I think I do enjoy some of the rigidity of Pathfinder a little bit more because at least I can have... I feel like I have more information sometimes, too, you know? I mean, it's um, easier to run something when you have a bunch of information in front of you, right? Yeah. Like, Lightning and I, uh, it's it's such a mess for us to find information because I have my lore document, Lightning has his lore document, 
they're completely separate from each other. Um, so it's kind of a pain sometimes to be like, hey, this is what the world's like when it's like, I can't tell you what the world's like after my game because you're in my game and you can't tell me because I'm in your game. Oh, jeez. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a fun bit of mess. Um, yeah, you know, like... And, and again, like, there are definitely games where the canon matters to a degree, you know? Yeah. Like, if you're talking about, like, uh, again, Shadowrun, World of Darkness, those are worlds that are best described as canon worlds that you have. Granted, a lot of the characters and stories, they don't talk as much about them. Like, when I talk about lore from those places and stuff a lot like that, I tend not to talk as much about characters because there are some characters that are defined. Mm -hmm. It's just that those are the kind of worlds that you have this basis and you almost just, like, make up your own characters for it. Yeah. You know. Um, and again, like, I think 5e being as easy a system as it is also pertains very easily to making up a lot of your own worlds sometimes. So yeah. I can see that being a reason behind... Um, uh, It favoring a not a a a, 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 a a a very flexible world, a non-static world. Yeah. Mm. Turner Arms has a nice benefit as well, and I guess some to some degree maybe Galarian, but not as much because there's more information for Galarian. Um, there's official canon and there's your canon, yep. right? Your games. Um. Everyone has a version of Forgotten Realms or Galarian if you play in those settings because some, things don't always go the way they're intended. Like, if we would connect... Because we're probably going to do more Pathfinder games. If we connect, if we ran our Your World of Galarian with all of our Pathfinder games being canon, that would be so different <laughs> compared to what the official timeline is. I don't know if I would connect them together. Because it, it does, like... Okay, I'm not gonna lie. Your Skulls and Shackles story um, was just weird in a lot of ways. Um, there are plenty of easy things to connect together. But, like, also... It ended up going a lot farther ahead in the timeline, too. Yeah. So it's, like, that's that's the convenient part of, like... The, the Shackles changing slowly okay but the thing is there is actual stuff going on in a lot of the galarian lore that actually pertains to that kind of thing it's sort of like i learned about some stuff just a couple of weeks ago like i didn't know uh until recently that cheliax had freed all their slaves yeah that was like one of the i'm like and i and i, I, I you know my thought pattern was the queen didn't do this out of the goodness of their heart she basically wanted to make sure that, like, we're in a bad political situation. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of unrest still. If we keep things, like, if we, like, there could be, like, a slave revolt. If I all free them and just make them basically lesser people under us, they'll be happy for a while and we can stabilize. Worry about it later. Uh, so she probably just did that to, in order to make sure the slaves yeah. didn't revolt. <laughs> that probably was something that was on the horizon, if not. Uh, not gonna lie. Um, but that was an interesting thing to, to hear about, that, like, I didn't realize it happened in, like, some of the more recent lore. And it's interesting things because it does pertain to the living world aspect of, um, you know. <clears throat> Certainly, there, there's a lot of interesting things like that that pop up in the, uh, lore aspects and, and like fun. lightning says in in forgotten realms and pathfinder there are optional rules for firearms mm -hmm. if you add those to certain regions it does change a lot like the shackles doesn't actually have firearms but it gives you the option to add those in and that changes that setting mm -hmm. like <clears throat> there are a few actual firearms in the normal book like uh bone fist does have one yeah but like most of them don't exist like, I, I use a lot of the optional rules for that. Right, you had a like, gunslinger, so you kind of had to. 
Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it did kind of like change a little bit of the way that this story worked too, and the world worked a little bit. Definitely. And, you know, it's this, it's, there's just a lot of interesting juxtapositions on the way that you take a lot of things for how you interpret a lot of that stuff. And I think that's, maybe that's another thing I like about canon, is that canon can sometimes be interpreted if you have it there to begin with. You know, it has a flexibility to it. And I don't mind making shit up on my own, but like, I think the thing is, the more you have on a canon with flexible points, the easier it is to make shit up that fits with it rather than making shit up that, you know, like, if you're building your own version, the canon could have issues down the line. Like, again, it's what we were saying with the, you know, the version of Skulls and Shackles we did, Buccaneers. I don't know if I would make that full canon if I made all the, the versions of the games I had canon together, because it is just a little bit weird and confusing to have together with the way it's presented, with guns and stuff like that. Yeah. It's a little different. It worked for us, it might not work for that full, all the games together. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I do find, um, Video game canon's a kind of cool thing to do, though, still, nonetheless. Yeah. Uh, you know, for, for, um, five years. That, that's definitely... Cool. Yeah, um... That's pretty cool. Um, like I said, like I said earlier, I don't know how they're going to handle all the changes Baldur's Gate can potentially make to the world, because it's a lot. <sighs> Maybe they won't handle it at all, unfortunately. Maybe. Um... Like, I don't know. Uh, I, I do think canon is and is important. Um, like I said, I develop a living world alongside a good, very good friend. We have a canon world state because we're not going to go further into a timeline because that would go too far into the future than we really want to. Yeah. So we have a canon world state to where this is where our canon ends. And if people want to run in the future, they can. It's not my problem. Plenty but of also- people have experienced that world at this point. But it gives you a timeline, too. You know? Yeah. And then you can do smaller things on that timeline that, you know, as long as they don't uh, do major events that are the overall timeline, they could yeah, do like, smaller adventures. Like the, the current games, Lightning, are going to run. They're just set sporadically in the overall timeline. They're smaller adventures. Mine might be a high-level adventure, but it's still not going to really affect the world stage. Yeah. <clears throat> Again, it's 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 the um, it's the curse of the Crimson Queen. It doesn't necessarily affect the world stage because Corvosa, in the long run of the world stage, in Galarian is it's really a yeah. minor place. Well, lighting you know? in our timeline is very long, mm-hmm. and it's it's only getting longer because now we're dealing with planar stuff. We're finally dealing with that. We're dealing with planar stuff. We're finally dealing with gods, and gods is a fucking pain to do. Mm. It's like. Just making up deities is a pain, and you can't have too many deities, or you've got, like, you're in the situation of 5e and Pathfinder, where then you maybe you have to kill a couple of them off, and just having too many deities doesn't make enough sense. You need to find, what is a deity? What can a god do? It's just annoying. But all that matters to canon, so you have to write that shit down. Yep. Anyway... <clears throat> I thought it was an interesting discussion on uh, a little bit of canon there. Because uh, it's definitely... Canon stories are definitely yeah. um, important to plenty of games. And, and again, in some games, not uh, not at all. But again, up to you how you use it. Honestly speaking, you could probably <clears throat> do a World of Darkness game and ignore the entire canon completely. Oh, you don't have to use canon. Like, you can yeah. just... Make your own shit. Don't matter. Yeah. Granted, like, World of Darkness, you're in a modern setting, but just, yeah. you know, you don't have to interact with that at all. Yeah. Same with Shadowrun. You, well, to a degree, you have to you understand the time period is the technology, but, like, other than that, like, actual storyline stuff, other than, like, here's a world setting you probably don't have to use. 
or you can just alter some of those places however you want them, how you feel they would be in the 20, late 2070s, early 2080s, you know? After the shit went down in that universe. Yeah, like, especially if you run just, like, because we're getting all these uh, licensed tabletops now. Mm. Like, if you run, like, a Fallout game, you can just ignore, like, a lot of Fallout. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. It's yours. Yep. You got the book. You can do what you want with the setting. No one's going to stop you. Todd Howard's not going to come to your house and take the book from you. Yeah. You can invent your own ending completely different yeah. to one. Like, if you wanted to play in the Mojave <clears throat> Desert and say it's after New Vegas, come up with a, like, fifth storyline that yeah. you think should have been the way that the entire yeah. thing ended, you know? And if it, uh, it ends with the Legion winning, I am going to come to your house and take your book away from you and slap you. I was going to say maybe, like, you They're know, uh, you as the, the, the traveler saving Caesar. Sorry, his name's the Courier. No, the courier's expect. <laughs> the courier saving Caesar allowed for like some kind of peace treaty to be made between you know the NCR and Caesar's Legion. And, right. like, you know. That would be just absurd, but you could do that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's why you can ignore canon because that's would never happen. <laughs> Those are so yeah. The house turned into a flesh monster and eats, eats all the people of New Vegas. I mean. Actually, that does sound like a very Fallout thing. Not gonna lie. Okay. <laughs> uh, the Winter of Adam book has a giant centipede monster, so you can just do whatever you want. Yeah, there's there's a lot you can just kind of do with that. And, and, and again, I guess as you're right, with a lot of this published material, you can kind of do with what you want with the worlds they are there. Yeah. You know, um, it's the same exact way with all these worlds here. How much you want to it to be canon or not canon is up to you. They just provide you with this backdrop which can help you with decisions. That's it. So. Alright. I think that's probably a good point to leave it there today. It wasn't a very super long episode, but hey, it wasn't uh, a lot of stuff this week. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Um, thank you for joining me, Momo. Yeah, no problem. Um, you have anything you want to shout out? Shout out to Larian Studios for making a once in a decade video game. Mm. Like, literally, nothing is going to come out like that for a very long time. Probably not until Larry makes another video game. I gotta be honest, it's sort of like we get. There are plenty of games that I kind of like would put into like the games of time kind of thing, and I think Baldur's Gate 3 will end up being on those lists. Yeah, I don't think there will ever be another game with the level of detail and choice that Baldur's Gate 3 has. I unfortunately can see that. Um, it might be a while before we get anything quite like that, that detailed choice system and stuff like that, since... What, like, there's so many different runs people can have yeah. that have so I'm many I'm different... still finding new shit in Act 1, and I've played the game for 300 hours. Mm-hmm. A lot. Um, but yeah. Uh, myself. Once the tabletop's up, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, early afternoons, usually between 1 and 2, give or take. Uh, Saturdays, usually about 11. Uh, pretty, pretty exactly for that one, just because of stuff going on. Um, Crimson Queen! Join us! Wednesdays, 9pm EST. We'll check I it out on YouTube. I'm in that game. I, it's I play really good. Necromancer, sometimes. Yeah. Lightning will be joining us. Uh, yeah, when, Lightning's gonna um, nuke me with positive energy and free the world from my curse. I, I don't know if we talked about it, but Cell has to take a step away because of personal scheduling, you know, um, Be so, that way, you know, you know, um, I, I, we're just gonna have Cell's character go to the side, you know, maybe Cell could return one day, maybe not, who knows, you know, like, I drink Cell's character's blood to learn their spells. <laughs> uh, look, I've got, I've got an idea where they're going off, but it depends, it's gonna, we're gonna see how the next... Four so weeks goes. So what what you get for making a deal with a level one imp, loser. Your Look, blood maybe, is mine now. That that imp storyline, I can 
probably just ignore because the cell is going away. <laughs> I had some ideas about what to do with that, but also I don't know if Cell even remembered that. No, I feel like Cell doesn't remember that even happened. I feel like Cell I... doesn't remember we released a gang of orphans. <laughs> I thought about doing something with the gang of orphans, honestly. <laughs> uh... But, uh, I don't know. The gang of orphans would be hilarious. Uh, there's just a new gang of, of, of orphans that have, like, formed together into their own street gang somewhere in Corposa. Just have something happen with it during the downtime next week. Ooh. To sell specifically. That would be hilarious. You get pickpocketed. Yeah. <laughs> by some children. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, um, check out Discussing Tabletop every Saturdays at 6pm. I have Discord, Twitter, a link below, and all that kind of stuff for social media. Remember to give all the likes and stuff for wherever you're checking out and hearing this. If, uh, if I finally get this up on um, some kind of podcast site, so just I have, to, I, have to, I have to set up all those ones and stuff like that, and you know, or YouTube, which, whatever. Anyway, um, I'm just gonna say bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.